Hello, this is Alex Ineco from Brasilia, Brazil, and uh, today we're going to talk about medieval music. Okay, music in the medieval period. This class is in English. And um, if you want to watch this class in Portuguese, você quer ouvir essa aula em português, você acha aí no YouTube. It will be in YouTube. And um, if you want to watch other classes on other uh, periods on music, you also have it there on YouTube. Okay, just click it there. Remember that all um, of, uh, of our programming is at ecai.com.br. BR stands for Brazil. And um, you can find all of our programming there. Okay, excellent. So today we will talk about music in the... Uh, let's start again, okay? Let's start. Three, two, one. Hello! Uh, today we will talk about medieval music. What is medieval music? What, what, what time period are we talking about? It's about a thousand years between the century, between the 4th and the 14th century. More roughly, okay? Roughly. Um, what comes right after the medieval period is the Renaissance, and you will find that video there on YouTube. What art are we talking about? If we, what is the the music that we'll be talking about? Is kind of a soundtrack to these, to uh, to this art. Okay, this is uh, art from Byzantium. Okay, Byzantine art. Realize that. Uh, See that there's some gold here on the, okay, on, on the, I can't remember how you call those, that little thing on the saints, I forget it, okay? But uh, there you have a halo, is that it? I think it's a halo. And um, you, so this is art from Byzantium, okay? Byzantine art. This is Romanesque art, okay? Frescoes. Think of those very heavy churches made of stone, very heavy churches. This is a fresco, okay? In the Byzantine art that I showed, they, they love, um, how do you call that? Oh my God, I forget now, I'm, I'm forgetting things. Um, mosaic, okay, Byzantine art, mosaic, Rom Romanesque uh, art, uh, frescoes. And here in this painting, you see Gothic art, okay? Gothic art. The Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is Gothic, okay? So there you go. So this is the art of the period that we'll be talking today. Uh, Byzantine, Romanesque, and um, Gothic which is all comprised, we, we call it the medieval period, about a thousand years of, uh, of art. And what is the music for, the, for this period? Um, it is mainly this. What is this? This is Gregorian chant. If you're getting here now, se você está chegando agora, essa aula em português já aconteceu, estará no YouTube em duas horas, ok? Muito obrigado. What is this that we just heard? This is a um, Gregorian chant. It's an Ave Maria and it's a Gregorian chant. Um, how did we get here? What, what comes before? And that's a good question and it's very hard to answer. Why? Because um, there wasn't much music that was written down before the medieval era. Actually, there wasn't much music that was written even in the medieval era. Only priests, only the church wrote down music and was able to keep in libraries and all that. Um, and, uh, but how do we get here? What kind of music happened before? All we know is, uh, we, we can talk a little bit about Greek music, okay, about 2,000 years ago. Uh, but then we're talking about uh, Western music. What is Western music? Western Europe, okay, and later on the United States, okay. But Brazil, for example, I'm Brazilian. Brazil, that I always thought was part of Western world. Oh my God, I, it came to my surprise that we are not. We're called 
world music. Our music is world music. It's not part of the of the Western tradition civilization, except for uh, classical composers such as Villa Lobos, Carlos Gomez. Those that is Western tradition. Okay, so this is uh, just so that we <coughs> understand what we're talking about. So. When we talk about Greek music 2,000 years ago, listen to this, okay? This is, this is music that was found in a, in a tombstone, okay? It's an epitaph of say kilos. You need to pay attention, it is unison, okay? But Alex, I'm hearing a voice and I'm hearing a plucked string, I'm, I'm hearing an instrument. How can it be unison? Well, think about this, if I have if I sing a melody and I play it on the piano, I play the very same melody on the piano. So if I say, imagine all the people, and then I play the piano. Bom, 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 bom. If I sing together with the piano, if I sing the very same notes, that is also unison. Okay, it may, it may sound a little weird, but it is. Okay, it is not unison if I'm playing harmony on the piano. Okay. If I'm singing, uh, imagine all the people, and I'm singing, blom, 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 then it's not unison. It's uh, because harmony is accompaniment and therefore not unison. But if I'm playing the very same notes, which is what's happening here with this Greek uh, piece, let's hear it again. This is unison, okay? It's a plucked string, some plucked instrument, uh, and um, voice, observe. It's the very same note. Okay? Hold that thought, okay, of unison, because this would be very important. Hello, Desi, good to have you with us. Now, this is another example of um, Greek music. It's a, a play, Orestes, and I, I am deeply sorry, I can't remember who wrote Orestes, okay? I know it's a Greek playwright, but I, I can't remember. Go to YouTube, go to Wikipedia, okay? Orestes, listen to this. Some wood instrument, some, some wind instrument. And some percussion, of course. Listen to this melody. The very same melody will appear later on with the chorus. Sorry, I'll find it. Here it is. Thank you, Stella. It's the same melody that we were listening before, that we were hearing before, you hear it again. Why am I saying this? Because this is all we know about music uh, before the medieval period, okay? Uh, and we go back to the Gregorian chant now in the medieval era. Okay, what is unison again? What is it? is everybody singing together, okay? There's a bunch of monks singing this Ave Maria, but they're singing the very same thing. It's as if I was singing with myself, okay? So, Ave Maria. So if 10 people sing with me the very same melody, that's called unison, or this is the Latin root word for it, if you go Greek, it will be monophony, monophonos, monophony, okay? Monophony, unison, one melodic line, okay? Now, there's about 1,000 years of Gregorian chant, okay, between the centuries of, uh, 5 and 15 or something like that, before the Renaissance, and if you want to uh, watch the, the class on Renaissance, just click there on YouTube and it's there. Um, and so, but there were attempts, you know, we start with unison, but artists are curious, artists are creative. They want to 
evolve. They want to create new things. And what do they create? They, they're trying to get out of this unison. And uh, it's not easy. It's something that for us today, when we think about melody and harmony, it's very obvious for us. It's not, it was not always like this. Harmony is something that was invented later on. Okay, accompaniment. It was invented later on. So it's, it's a concept that it's hard for us to, to, to think about. But if you think about perspective in, in art, uh, it's something that is very obvious for us today. Okay, if we think, let me, let me get back to art here. Uh, see here, look at this, look at this painting here with a bunch of people there. No, not these naked people here. I can't see it. Oh, there. If you see that painting, you see that it's like a, a, a pic, like a, a, a photograph, right? You see that there's people in the background, there's that uh, construction in the background. There's perspective. The artist who, who painted that, he was able to emulate distance. He was able to imitate reality. That is very advanced. That is not something very simple, okay? Um, observe that in, uh, uh, in uh, medieval art, you don't have that perspective. Look at this. See, I mean, people, they don't know exactly how to do perspective well. You know that this is a drawing. This is not, this is a, an attempt to represent reality, but it's not, um, I mean, they figured out that, you know, people in the background should be a little smaller, but they, they didn't have uh, pretty much this concept. So, <clears throat> I see harmony pretty much as perspective. Harmony is to music what perspective is to paintings. It's, a, it's a, an insight of, uh, of depth in music that didn't exist before um, the Renaissance. So in the medieval period, we are talking about mostly unison, or when it's not unison, is this weird harmony that it, uh, we in the in the modern era we, we look to it we listen to it and we say oh it's a little exotic it's a little weird it's not exotic it's because it was based on different systems it's not tonality tonality is based on do re mi fa sol la ti do okay and um it was not based on that yet okay it was based on church modes Ooh, church modes. I'm not going to talk about that because it's too much theory, but go to Wikipedia and type church modes, M-O-D-E-S, modes, church modes, and you'll see that there are scales, different scales, that um, uh, music was based on. Okay, so that's why it sounds a little funny for us. Okay, so I was talking about unison, and they were the first attempts to get out of unison. <coughs> Listen to this, to this hallelujah. Suddenly unison, okay? So the guys go, ah, and then unison. Let's listen to it again. Different, different voices and then unison. Gregorian chant, unison, okay? So the first attempts were like, we're gonna get out of this, but then we go back to, to the original stuff, okay? Listen to this other attempt, listen to this. It's kind of funny, listen. <sighs> I know it's pretty. It's kind of um, exotic. You light a candle and then you pray. Ooh, very exotic. So people are trying to get out of the unison mode. Okay? There's another attempt here. It 
is like it is as if they didn't know um i mean it is, they didn't know our, our way of thinking uh harmony so the the conductor score for example or the choir score since since we have always have uh, choir singers with us that choir score so uh, soprano alto tenor bass <coughs> that we singers we use we use it i think here it is uh some i have some harmony here look, look at this okay this is a this is a score okay when you have here four voices oh it's hard for me to put here Soprano, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. You have four voices written here, okay? In the, the, the medieval period, you didn't have that, okay? You have, each voice was separated, it was a different book. They, they couldn't, they didn't see harmony. They didn't observe harmony as we observe today. It was a, a different game, okay? So that's why it sounds a little weird to us, a little exotic, okay? Listen to this again. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, but in a different sense. I mean, you. <clears throat> it's only with the Renaissance that we start to hear those melodies that we go. Oh, this is so sweet. It's because of harmony. It's harmony that was developed later. Remember what I said about perspective in paintings? It's the same thing, okay? It's as if we're, you're looking at what we perceive as primitive art. It's the, Obviously, it's not primitive. They didn't know at the time what we know today. So there is no more evolved music, but there is uh, each, each uh, period has their own uh, characteristic, okay? Characteristics. I'm sorry about my English today. It's a little rusty, okay? Then there's the Elvis Presley of um, the medieval period, okay? Actually, two monks, Perrotin and Léonin, from the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. They were like Elvis. They rocked medieval music. They proposed organum a different uh type of harmony at the time uh and um it was many voices at the same time <clears throat> observe this It goes forever. It's Sederunt, the name of this uh, movement. It goes forever. Say, it sounds like a bunch of sheep screaming. And then there's an organ in the bottom. You hear this pedal tone. Pedal tone is there's this fixed note. Ah, and then the guys are singing on top in different voices. Let's listen to it again. advanced as it will get in the medieval period okay if you want to go beyond this you reach the Renaissance which is the other video that we already have there on YouTube click on it okay now all the music that we talked about uh, today was church music was there music in the Rena in the medieval period was there music outside of church in the medieval uh, period of course okay but people couldn't read or write, so we don't know exactly how it sounded like because there's no, uh, there was no way of documenting it. And if there was a way of writing it down, um, materials weren't good enough to last for 2,000 years to get to us. Okay, so uh, that's the main reason why we, we don't study popular folk music with the same depth that we study 
uh, church music in the medieval period is because they couldn't write it down. It was called oral tradition. You sing just like lullabies that your mom sang to you, that you sang to your kids. The, um, your mom didn't write them down, okay? It's oral tradition, okay? Brazilian, Brazilian tradition is very oral, okay? Se essa rua, se essa rua fosse minha. I didn't learn it by writing, but by reading it. Okay, my mom sang it to me. So anyway, so some pieces we have, very few pieces that we have from the medieval period, uh, popular or folk, okay, and somehow they were written down. And uh, we have this one, French, okay, and um, listen to this. <laughs> It's pretty. If you're here uh, since the beginning of the, of the lecture, uh, this piece is similar to the Greek piece that we heard in the beginning because it's unison with plucked strings and voice. Listen to the Greek um, example again. So Greek, Greek music from French music. It's the same principle, one voice, uh, one instrument with plucked strings, okay? Plucked strings and uh, bowed strings, okay? With a bow. Um, unison also, okay? Very pretty. Now, this is German. Okay, When I say French and German, I'm not sure. Uh, it's in French and in German, but I'm not sure what country, okay? Could, could have been... Uh, Holland, it could have been, okay, uh, Flemish, anyway, this is in German. Same principle, there's one instrument of one uh, uh, wind instrument somehow <coughs> and then there is a voice okay so you hear I don't I don't speak German so there you go so listen to this same melody singing Okay, so this is pretty much what we had for pop and uh, folk music. And this is actually what I had for medieval music today. Remember that these, these uh, talks are for non-music majors. They are for people who just enjoy music and want to understand a little bit more about each of the, the time periods. Okay, so... This is a lecture on medieval music. We already have Renaissance, Baroque, Classic, Romantic. And on Monday at uh, 4 p.m. Brazil, 5 p.m. Uh, New York time, we have, uh, we'll have the modern um, era, okay? And then the, the full course on, on classical music will be, will be ready on YouTube, okay? I thank you very much for your, for your audience, for being here, thank you very much. Remember that at ekai.com.br you will find our programming uh, during the, this time of a pandemic and also the real world time, okay, when we're, when we're done. Always go to ekai.com.br and we'll find what we are doing, okay? Thank you very much for being with us and uh, it's, you, you've made my life much easier with uh, these lives. It's great to have people out there to talk to and I wish you all to remain healthy and uh, stay at home, wash your hands and uh,
peace on earth. 